Um, hello, folks. Uh, thank you for for being here. So today I'm going to talk briefly about uh, about about uh, CVs, right? Or let me let me be specific. Let me explain a couple of things before I start here. Uh, three disclaimers or three points to think about as I talk about this. The first one is this: a this is not a one size fits all thing, right? Resumes. Or, or CVs, right? And I'll tell you why I say resumes and CVs. That's my next point. But these things, you know, they may look different for different reasons, based on levels of experience, based on on um on industry you are in, based on whoever made it, right? All these things, you know. So what we are looking at are the are the basics of it. That's what we're gonna talk about today. But if you already have a resume, it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. We're going to talk about ways in which it can be stronger. So, or if somebody else, another one of your mentors or somebody else presents you a resume that looks nothing like, like the ones that I'll share today, uh, you know what I mean? It, it, it's fine. It's not inherently wrong. But the important thing is so that you know the 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 basics of it. So, for example, to use a metaphor, uh, you know, a car doesn't have to be a Benz. You know, it could be a BMW, it could be a Honda Fit, it could be an Aqua, right? It could be a van, it could be a small car, it could be two doors, it could be four doors, right? That doesn't make it wrong as a car, right? It could be a a a a, a Range Rover, you know what I'm saying? And that serves a different purpose that sometimes Benz cannot. Uh, so that that's okay, right? But what we need to do is to understand the basics of how cars work. That's sort of what we are talking about today. That's one. Uh, so, for example, let me give you a quick example of what I'm talking about here. This is my general uh, resume or, or CV. Again, I'm going to explain that difference shortly. Right? This is what it looks like. Very simple. One page. I, you know, it doesn't even get to the bottom all the way. I could have used a bigger font. But it's fine, you know. Just my relevant professional experiences, my education, my um, my community involvement. Uh, right? You know, I could probably add another section here of my awards and things like that. So, you you know, but we'll be talking about, but that's just mine, right? Let me show you another example here of uh, my sister, Michelle. Oh, do I have that one? Oh, there we go. Right. So look at hers, right? It's same thing, professional experience. She also emphasizes her skills here. But why is it different? Well, she's in a different industry, right? She's in a, you know, in an industry that that prides, uh, you know, where v being visual is important. So she even has a picture. It's very nice. I love it. Uh, she makes this in Canva. But also, she also has access to those things so, so she can do that. I'm in a more traditional job. I teach at a university. So mine, even though that's not actually what I use, uh, what I told you is not actually what I, but those are the kind of jobs I've been in, right? So that's one. The second thing, the point I wanted to make is that the difference between a resume and CV, and while you hear me sometimes go in between those words, uh, let's look at this page here. Um, so this, these are words that you hear. So here it explains here, a, resu a resume is a one page summary of your work experience and a background relevant to the job you are applying to, relevant to the job you are applying to. So you may actually have several different resumes based on if you're applying to different jobs. So I remember one time I was uh, when I was looking for jobs, uh, and I was applying for jobs in, in at universities, at nonprofits, and even some uh, in, in like uh, group homes, you know. Uh, you know, to to be uh, a, a, an assistant to maybe old people, things like that. You know, jobs that people do in the diaspora. So those resumes looked different because those jobs don't require the same skills. And we'll talk about that more uh, in particular shortly. Uh, a CV, on the other hand, typically, it means, uh, it says, yeah, a long diary that, uh, that includes all your experiences, certificates, and publications. And yes, was like a, a CV represents a full history of your academic. So CVs are more, if you're like in academia, right? If you teach, so you need to list all your publications, the, the you know, the classes you have taught, what certificates you've received. And it's not just in education you do that. People might do that in places like politics as well. So let me quickly show you an example of my CV, right? My curriculum vitae. Uh, curriculum vitae means, uh, literally means in Latin, uh, uh, your academic life, you know? Yeah, this is my. I think this might be my most recent one, but.
but it's all good. So you can see here, curriculum vitae, it goes on for like pages on end, you know, because I'm listing my degrees, everything I've published, not even everything I've published. And now I select some of the things because I've been writing for a while, the conferences I've presented at and so forth. So anyway, this is 10 pages long. This is not what you're concerned with. However, I've noticed in Zimbabwean speak, right? I don't know if it's just Zimbabwe, but other places as well. A lot of people use the word CV to describe both. So what I'm what I might explain to you today is largely what we call a resume, but regardless, the you know what I'm actually talking about, you know, is what they may call a CV in your you know when you are applying for 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 the kind of work or, or opportunities that you're looking at right now, you know, because most of you guys don't have haven't done a lot at your age to have neither had I, um you know, uh, to, to justify a long a CV, a long CV in this form. So what I'm describing today as a resume, you can use that when they ask for CVs. I guess that's the point I'm making. I had a third point. I can't remember right now, but let's keep it moving. Okay, so the big thing you want to do is, I'll share this with you. I'll use this one. And oh, the third thing I was going to say, sorry, is don't be intimidated by this. I'm, you know, in my mid-30s. Uh, I've been in the U.S. since I was, you know, maybe 18. So I've been, I've had certain opportunities that maybe, um, you know, some of you guys may not have at that age or in that space. Saka, all this to say, with you, when you see Kunga, this looks like I have a lot going on for me. It's fine. You'll definitely get there too in time. Uh, so don't worry too much about the specifics I have here. Uh, just think about the, the, the layout and follow me, right? Uh, then I'll, So I'll be focusing on two particular types of resumes or two particular types of what you guys may, may hear being called CVs. And it, uh, but again, remember, I told you there's no formula to this. Saka, as other people send their CVs as well, including Mr. Mr. Matavier and other folks, I'll be, I'll be sharing those as well so you can see how else it can be done. So this is mine from a few years ago, but I think it works. So here you can tell I've kept it to one page like I explained earlier, but you see here, start with your name right uh you know uh your government name at this stage you can see later on because now as as a professional i just go by shingima vima that's what i publish under you can see here I've just, i just have it as shingima vima but you don't want to do that early on until you have some identity but uh so you know keep it at uh make sure you have your government name your your full name as it were and it uh then you can have your address and where people should contact you, right? You know, be, you know, these are make sure these are things that you check regularly. These are things that are available to you and things that you're comfortable with. So your email address and your phone number, good. People can hit you up. Then you can also put your address in case uh, you're receiving anything in the in the in the mail. Uh the one thing I'll say here is kinda, you know, uh if your email, you know, can area yeah, you know. Uh, try find uh, something that sounds a little more professional, maybe just like your name, you know, John Moyo at, at gmail.com or something like that is fine. Don't have crazy emails, at least not for this purpose. Don't have a uh, John gets girls at gmail.com, eh, you know, uh, slay queen Yasha at, at hotmail. Eh, no, don't do that, right? Because that leaves a bad impression. So once you've put those details, because these people are going to want to contact you if you get the job. Next thing you go to, I recommend is education, uh, right? So yours, like you can see, I'm going to get up a bachelor's. That's the first thing I put here. Then I put my master's and my PhD. But of course, I'm trusting a lot of you guys. Some of you guys have your bachelor's degrees, uh, but a lot of you guys are maybe are just done with high school or thereabouts. Saka Moti, yeah, you, you know, use that, use that, right? It's just the same thing, but use that differently. So for you, I would recommend starting with your O level, right? You can put your O level here. Mungo to, um, you know, you say three A's, three B's, and two C's or something like that. Uh, Moisa date that you graduated and the, the school or institution you graduated from, right? That's one. Then we come to, so all level. Then here you would put your A level, right? So you do it uh, backwards chronologically, if that makes sense. Tanga with the most recent thing. So that's your A. Um, so, so over here, for example, if you have a bachelor's, you put your bachelor's here. If you have your A levels, put them here. 
uh, say, you know, make sure you put A level, then you put a combination that you had, right? Uh, mass, physics, chemistry, um, maybe in, in, in brackets, what out, out I got, you know, or in brackets, say chemistry A, physics B, uh, chemistry, uh, math A, whatever. Then or do the same thing, the date, then the place you graduate, you, you got your A levels from, and you do the same, and it. The next part here is where a lot of you guys, if you're early on, you know, you probably don't have this experience like that. A, if you have professional experience, any professional experience, at all, if you've worked in a store, right, a, list it, uh, list it on here. And the important thing is, and when I say store, I'm talking about even if you've worked in a tax shop, right? Because that's a store, right? Team Rongo, I'll say Zaro, but early on, like when you look at my list here, there are many jobs I don't put on there anymore because I've worked a lot of jobs. But at the time when those were all the jobs I had listed. So here you would say uh, whatever the name of the store, Moisa, you know, uh, Chigodora uh, Market, uh, then you you know so you put that on here. Yeah? Then you put the uh, store uh, clerk or store attendant. Then you can describe the duties that you did. But when you describe the duties that you did, be very specific as well. You know, in a in, and be very specific, but also tailor it for the job that you're looking for, right? So say you're applying to say aeronautical engineering or airplane engineering. What do they want? Somebody who's particular with details. Somebody who's on time. Somebody who's uh, hardworking. So when you, if you're talking about the duties you had in the store, you might say open the store every day, uh, five days a week or seven days a week at seven a.m. Right? Describe that because that's how we know that you're responsible. Then you can say uh, responsible for tally tallying up the days uh, uh takings right or the days income uh right a. Then you can even you know, the good another thing important thing is to remember numbers. Uh, you can even say like uh, totaling uh, 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 up to more than a thousand dollars. That way, people know you know how to deal with this big thing. So you can put those responsibilities, uh, kept the place in order, and uh, and uh, and was responsible for maintaining inventory. And it that's one job. For now, that's fine. If you have one job or two, modaro, then. What I would recommend is an, another thing for you guys at this stage is leadership experience. And again, I don't have leadership experience here, but I've had it in previous journal uh, versions of this, right? Leadership experience will allow you to do talk about other things that you that are not necessarily jobs. So, for example, if you were a prefect in high school, where saw papo, on what are my responsibilities are prefect, bobo. If you were a secretary of your youth group at church. Right, or something like that. You can also put it under leadership experience. If you were part of Clubhouse, well, Clubhouse, you know, you can put that on here, but you can put it on the community involvement as well. And it so you do that. Uh, um, yeah, this may actually be a little too. Let me see if I can find another version of this. Yeah, and I guess I with uh, with volunteer. Yeah, oh, anyway, so yeah, this is another version of the same thing. Uh, if you have honors, you can put them up here. I Now I put them down here, but it's okay. Relevant professional experience, leadership experience. Then you can also put community involvement. Say you were not in leadership or, or spaces, but you were involved in things. That's where Clubhouse might be perfect. Clubhouse International Ambassador, Clubhouse International Scholarship Recipient. What out are some of the things that you did? Uh, participated in... Uh, in uh, three community service events each year between this year and that year, uh, things like that, right? Uh, attended mentorship things, whatever. You do all those things. That's, you know, you can say that's community involvement. Uh, you can do volunteer service as a separate thing and talk about the volunteer work you did. Then you can put uh, honors, right? If you've received different awards. And again, if you're in Clubhouse, you've definitely received that scholarship is an award, but I'm sure you may have gotten others more other you know other things too other awards uh kuchkoro in other in the community and so forth so list those as well so these are mine that i had at the time if when i was in high school like if i was fresh out of high school this this would be different i would list i was a soccer captain of of my of my team right it's a b team but i was captain anyway and i got most committed soccer player of the year award 
I was uh, so the captain thing I would put under leadership, but that award, the most committed player, I would put under honors. A what else is an honor that I would have had being a prefect? Well, yeah, but that's kind of like a, a leadership as well, so that's okay. Uh, but yeah, I got uh, dedicated to the community. I got that as an award, uh, and other things that I got from places like the Red Cross. So I list those as well. Then. After that, you can put other. You can put your skills, right? If this doesn't tell you people the skills you have already, you can put a list of skills here, right? So here for me, the language skills are important. But at your stage, you know, you can think about skills. Uh, what other things you are good at that could be valuable, right? You, if we look back at 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 my sister Michelle's picture, who by the way is a, is another founder of uh of Clubhouse, right? So show her love. You can see her own her skills. She's got hard skills and soft skills, right? So this is actually very good. Hard skills and soft skills. Uh, hard skills are more the things like a, like a, an actual tangible thing that you can do, right? So, and soft skills are more character like characteristics. So hard skills for you might be event planning, right? You see she has event planning on here. It might be a uh, gardening, right? Things that you can actually do. Woodworking, if you can do that, if you feel these things are relevant. Uh, but also soft skills are more like, what, what are your good qualities, right? So yes, yes, communication, decision-making, uh, you know, um, things like that, right? For me, it might be conflict resolution, a, um, you know, things like that. So you can also put your soft skills there. Uh, she has your achievements on this side. So again, the the format doesn't really matter, but the but the but the content doing the basa. So anyway, that's one way of doing it. I know I've already spoken way too long here. Um so let me quickly tell you. So that's what I want you guys to that's the first and easiest model to uh, to do. But another way to do a CV or a resume in this case, iri, iri one page foot is what we call a functional resume. Now, do I have my functional resume up here? Okay, yes. So this is a functional resume and it might also work well for you. So it starts off the same, right? With the contact details, but you can also make it specific for, you can start with a couple of sentences. Okay. Uh, that sort of explain why you, uh, you know, the job you're kind of looking for, right? And also just a brief introduction to yourself. So here I say, I'm a creative, dynamic, uh, international affairs professional, which is what I was doing at the time with experience in this and that. I'm currently looking for a position in, you know, in that space. Born and raised in Zimbabwe. I'm an American resident and I speak English and Shona fluently with some proficiency in Spanish. The difference between this one and those other ones is this one focuses not necessarily on the jobs or the positions, but on the, on the, on the skills. So here I say experience, then I'll pick up the a few job responsibilities that are, or a few skills that are needed in that particular job I'm applying for. So this job is gonna be asking for progr program development, for volunteer recruitment and for organizational leadership and it. So now I can take all those jobs and positions I've had and volunteer opportunities and see how those experiences I've had can translate here. So here you see Panati program development, I spoke about the work I do with Clubhouse here, organized 10 fundraising activities, which kept 11 Zimbabwean children in school, chi, 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 and it, right? Then I talk about my another job, which references uh, program development, who, who, uh, who Red Cross, which was a volunteer opportunity, it wasn't even a job, right? Then I talked about other things that I've done in other places as well. Same thing here. I'm mixing between two or three different jobs wherever the wherever a job reflects that skill. So for you, you can say leadership experience, right? You can say organizational leadership and use that to talk about your being captain of the soccer team and being a leader at your church group, right? But you can talk about instead of focus uh, describing the job itself, you describe about what about that job highlighted that skill. Then after that NISA experience, then I put my my work history here, right? At that point, I don't really need to explain it like that. But this is what I meant. So some of these jobs no longer feature on my on my on my resume now. But at the time, this is back in the day, 12 years ago now, 
I listed them all the way down to what I did when I was in high school, which was when I volunteered at this place in Chitungwiza. So yeah, those are two ways, right? One of them, this one is called a functional resume or functional CV, if you want to use uh, that language, and a, and, a, and, a, and a more traditional resume. Now, the traditional one is probably the way you want to go, but just think about it as you start to build your 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 own profile here, Togo and Akwita, um, this way as well. And like I said in the beginning, I'll send you a couple other resumes so you can see how else this could look. Uh, and I know I've gone on way too long, but if you have any questions for me, uh, please just uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, let's uh, let's build and let's get you guys in all the the the, the great places that you um, that you can. Um, that you can possibly participate in. Thank you guys very much indeed.